Apple just revealed their new A15 Bionic SoC, which will power the upcoming iPhone 13 and the new iPad mini. If you watched the California streaming event, it became pretty obvious that Apple wasn't too keen on going in depth with the performance of the A15, especially avoiding any comparison to last year's A14. The reference Apple wanted us to focus on was a undefined Competition. competition is still playing catch up than the leading competitions versus the leading competition. Performance the leading competition. There's nothing in the world like this chip. Let's take a peek behind the curtain and figure out if and where the new A15 actually improved over the A14 and explore why Apple might face similar issues next year. According to Apple, the new A15 Bionic comes with six new CPU cores two high-performance Avalanche cores and four high-efficiency Blizzard cores, a 16-core neural engine and up to five GPU cores. Other parts of the chip, like the ISP and video DNN encoding, have also been improved. If we compare the A15 with last year's A14, we can see that these two chips are very similar to each other. Both offer a 6-core CPU. The only actual difference is the GPU, with now up to 5 cores, one more than last year. Also important is the increased system level cache, which is twice the size now. The A15 offers 32 megabytes of system level cache, while the A14 had 16 megabytes. Of course, the amount of cores doesn't actually indicate performance. For example, 8 Zen 3 cores are a lot faster than 8 Zen 2 cores, due to the increased IPC. But how can we figure out if Apple actually improved performance? Apple isn't making it easy for us since they avoid any comparison of the A15 with the A14. But we can get around this if we take a look at the recent iPad upgrades, especially last year's iPad Air and this year's iPad mini launch. Last year, Apple upgraded the iPad Air to its fourth generation with a new design and the back then new A14 Bionic chip. Where it gets interesting is that the previous third gen iPad Air was using the A12 Bionic system and Apple did give us some hard performance numbers for that upgrade. A14's powerful new six core design, this results in an enormous 40% increase in CPU performance compared to the previous iPad Air. There is a 30% increase in graphics performance as well. As you could see, upgrading from the A12 to the A14 would give you around 40% more CPU performance and 30% more GPU performance. Now let's take a look at the new 6th generation iPad mini Apple just announced. We all know it will feature the new A15 chip and the interesting part is the previous 5th generation iPad mini also featured the A12 Bionic, like with the comparison of the iPad Air. And here's what Apple had to say about the upgrade from the A12 to the A15. Compared to the previous generation, the new iPad mini sees a 40% jump in CPU performance and a whopping 80% leap in GPU performance. As you can see, the performance numbers Apple gives for the A15 CPU upgrade are exactly the same they gave for the A14 CPU upgrade. Going from the A12 to the A14 gives you the same 40% CPU performance boost as going from the A12 to the A15. From what I can tell, Apple basically left the CPU cores untouched. The only area where the A15 substantially improves over the A14 is the GPU performance. And even there, most of the additional performance gains boil down to the extra GPU core, which is only active in the Pro models and the iPad mini. If we take the 30% increase in GPU performance the A14 offered over the A12 and multiply it by 1.25x because the A15 has 25% more GPU cores than the A14, we are already at a 62.5% GPU performance increase for the A15 over the A12. Now add the additional performance benefits of the doubled system level cache on top of that, and we're already pretty close to the 80% performance increase in GPU power Apple promises us. Again, it seems like there are no substantial improvements to the GPU architecture itself. The performance benefits for the A15 GPU are mostly explained by the extra GPU core and the double system level cache. Apple's focus on GPU performance is not by choice since the new iPhone 13 Pro models offer up to 120Hz display. Playing games at 120Hz 
needs twice the GPU performance compared to playing them at 60 Hz. Apple literally couldn't do anything else but focus on the GPU performance because it was needed to at least get some kind of boost in this area. That's also why they do not offer the 5 core GPUs on the standard iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini models. The A15 Bionic you get in the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini starts to look a lot like a A14 Plus. Same CPU performance and same 4-core GPU with only some additional benefits due to the increased cache. Yes, the neural engine has been improved too, but progress is harder to measure in that area. Still, there is a very good reason why Apple did not increase the performance of the A15 by that much. And it boils down to process node and die size. The A14 Bionic has around 11.8 billion transistors and is manufactured in TSMC's N5 process, giving it about a 88 mm squared die size. According to Apple, the A15 increases transistor count to a whopping 15 billion transistors. That's a 27% increase over the A14. We know the A15 is still using a 5 nanometer process. We're not sure yet if it's still the same N5 or the slightly improved N5P process that TSMC offers, but it doesn't really matter since neither of them offers any density improvements. As a result, the A15 with its 27% increase in transistor count should have a die size of around 112 mm squared. This is really close in size to the M1 which offers 16 billion transistors and a die size of around 190 mm squared. Apple also seems to have worked on other parts of the chip not affecting GPU or CPU performance, which would explain why the A15 is so close to the M1 in actual transistor count and die size, but offers fewer CPU and GPU cores. With the A15 being almost as big as the M1, the increase in die size not only means that there are fewer chips on a single wafer, it also decreases the yield, since more chips are prone to defects due to their increase in size. Imagine Apple would have increased the CPU cores or the neural engine cores too. The A15 would have turned out larger than the M1. Apple is clearly being limited by the manufacturing process TSMC offers at the moment. Without an increase in transistor density, Apple cannot afford to increase the die size without hurting the margin or increasing prices. And if you think a A15 with only minor performance improvements over the A14 is bad, next year could be even worse for Apple. TSMC's previous major node jumps, 7 nanometer in 2018 and 5 nanometer last year, all started ramping mid-year. That meant the production process was ready for an iPhone launch in fall. Next year, TSMC is planning to start a new N3 node, which will offer up to 70% more logic density compared to their current N5 offerings exactly what Apple needs to increase their transistor count without grading huge chips, but N3 is rumored to be delayed. Ramping is only expected to happen in the second half of 2022. If this turns out to be true, a future A16 based on TSMC's N3 process would not be ready for an iPhone launch in September. That's why there are rumors that the next A16 chip might be manufactured using TSMC's N4 process. And don't let the numbers fool you, N4 is just a slightly improved 5 nanometer process, offering very little improvements in transistor density. From my point of view, there are three scenarios for next year. Scenario number one, Apple will produce the A16 in TSMC's N3 process, and the iPhone next year will launch a little bit later, think November 2022. Scenario number two, the A16 will be produced in TSMC's N4 process, or maybe even stick with the N5, again only offering minor performance improvements. Scenario number three, the same thing, A16 produced in N4 and N5, but with actual performance improvements due to a larger die size. This means either price hike or Apple will reduce their margins, and we all know which is more likely. In conclusion, the A15 Bionic is little more than an A14 with one additional GPU core and increased system level cache. The transistor density of TSMC's 5 nanometer process is limiting Apple in how much performance they can put in their chips without blowing up their size, and as a result, greatly increasing production costs. This is not necessarily a bad thing, since the A14 is plenty fast, but it curbs any expectation of further performance improvements 
without a no trink and it puts the upcoming A16 on a tightrope. Delay the chip to get the better N3 process or be on time and use N4 with very little improvements. Apple has already made their choice. About a year before launch the process node is locked in. For now we can only wait and see what Apple came up with. In the future Apple needs to focus more on improving the core architecture of their SoCs which can offer performance boosts even within the same production node. And Apple will likely start to explore with other ways to affect die size, like modular chip design. What do you think about the new A15? Did it offer the performance gains you expected, or are you disappointed? And do you think next year's A16 will already use TSMC's 3 nanometer process, or will Apple stick with a 5 nanometer variant for next year? Leave a comment down below, I would love to read your opinions. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, follow for more content, and see you next time.